Hello from wherever you are, and welcome to Let's Play Games. I'm John McFarland, Adult Services Librarian for National Public Libraries, and I hope you'll join me in learning or rediscovering some of the more common and uncommon games out there. This time, we're going back into the world of dice. We're going into basic probability. How good's your math? How good can you estimate probability? How lucky you feel? This is shutting the box. Let's get stuck in. So Shut the Box is one of the games that, in theory, you could play with a much more minimalistic setup and is deviously simple. All it is, two die, you roll it, and you take the sum of the numbers and try and put one of these down. Now here's the kicker. You can put down the sum of the number you roll. So in theory, that's six. You could put down this. You could put down five and one. You could put down, let's see, three, two, and one. But once you put it down, you have to keep it down. And the goal is to get all 12 down. Now, we're going to play this a little simple at the beginning. And we're going to just do this 9 here. That way, we can show you kind of the core concept. Oop, let me put this the correct way. And then escalate it from there. So we'll roll here. We'll start on my left. Getting a 9 to start. So now here's the question. Do you want to put down 9? Do you want to put down eight and one, four and five? Because here's the fun twist. If you don't have a sum, it has to be exact. You can't take pieces. You then miss your turn. So me, I'm going to just put down this nine. Let's see what the other person rolls. They're gonna do two and a four. They'll take a different strategy. Let's see if you can figure out what's going on here. A 10. So now we have to figure out the sum of 10. So a little basic math here. Uh, that means we could do 8 and 2, 7 and 3. In theory, 7, 1 and 2. Hmm. I think we're just going to do 8 and 2. Now let's see what's going on over here. Uh, perfect 4. So we can't use that, but we can use the 1 and the 3. But this means that uh, we have high numbers only over here. Five, you can do that. All right, that's 11. So, hmm. well, we can't do nine and anything. We can't do eight and anything. We can't do seven and anything. So we got to do five and six. So that leaves us only seven, eight, nine. So we're having to roll some high numbers. Six, uh, roll the nine, that works out. Rolled an 11. How can we get 11? Hmm. So we'll do 7. And you either do 1 and 3 or 4. It, to me, makes no difference because you're going to need 4 in the end. So we'll just go for the 4 here. The other side needs 7 and 8. They rolled a 2. No help. Roll the 12, which would have been helpful if we were playing the full version. Uh, 7. So now it's who gets a four, who gets an eight? And the left side gets four, shutting the box. So this is a very fast paced game where you can just roll. But notice I took two different strategies here. One side of it took the higher number as infrequently as they could and wanted to go for some of these lower numbers. Whereas this side went for high numbers only. So we're going to reset and we're going to show you how this looks when trying to get all 12 because that adds another layer. Now let's add this other layer. We've got the 10, the 11, the 12. So we've got all possible combinations. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to again play this strategy of higher number on the left side and try and figure it out on the other side. So that's six, easy enough. Don't need the six for anything. 
lucky getting the 12. That makes my world so much easier on the right side. Uh, high numbers only. And why am I taking the 12? Well, that's because it is only one combination gets you the 12. You kind of need to take it if you get it. So here, of course now I'm really tempted to start taking the 11 combination because this is again, one of only two combinations that you get it. So this is some really lucky dice rolling on the right side. Uh, also getting the 11 here. So now we're gonna start getting some lower rolls, right? Yes, we are. So this is gonna be, we're gonna split it up. So the one and the three rather than taking the four. Now over here, we're gonna take high numbers only. That's the 10. Some really good rolling. Uh, 10, so what combinations can we make? Let's see, let's just do the six and the four. Over here, we can't do anything with the nine, so we're gonna take the highest possible, the eight and the one. Personally, I really like leaving the one, just because it gives you a little bit more flexibility as you get to the end game, but you gotta go with what you gotta go with. Here's your eight, so. Can you do anything with this? Can't do anything with the two, so you gotta take the eight. There's no reason not to, aside from realizing that you're gonna put yourself in a bad position later. So seven and two. Um, that's four. We can't do anything with this because the two on its own can't help. So they missed their turn. That's eight. So notice how there's still some options, but that's the three and the five. So there's perfectly viable ways. Can I do anything else with this? Nope, I gotta take the 10. I'm looking for just some small rolls here. That's six, can't do anything. Over to the right, that's eight, can't do anything with. So notice how as you begin to shut the box a little harder, you find yourself running out of options. Okay, 11, surely can do something here. Yes, the two and the nine. So now the left side is kind of left with the four and the 12. Over here, I'm looking for some combination of 12 actually, which if I get double sixes again, I can split it five and seven. Can't do anything here. Uh, four, so now left side, all they're looking for is 12. They just have to get lucky one time. Five, so we're to the right. Notice how we just have to keep going. And this is for me, part of the uh, race side, especially when you're doing two players, you find yourself getting a bit more progressively engaged in each dice rolls, you get closer and closer. As the right side rolls, double 12, shutting the box. Notice this is two very different strategies that still ended up getting close in the end. Part of this is setting up the game and putting yourself in the right position to only need a couple of numbers. Needing four means that I could have gotten lucky and rolled a three and a two or a four and a one. I had more options than rolling the 12. So you've got different ways of handling different ideas, but that in its short, some basic math and some fast paced rolling is shut the box. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to join us next time as we delve back into the world of cards for a numerically challenging game that escalates, scales, and has some difficult pile considerations to deal with. I'll see you next time.